kids? I'm the marvelous, amazing, spectacular man spider person! That's right, the character created by Steve Ditko and grossly appropriated by the pompous, egotistical dirtbag Stan Lee. <laughs> Look it up. Anyway, I need your help, kids! You see, even though I'm a super powered genius, I never had the foresight to patent any of my inventions and share them for the betterment of the greater community. So I'm broke! Now I do birthday parties, Halloween parties, bachelor parties, graduations, bar mitzvahs, even funerals! You also make great stickers for my daughter's potty training. Yes, I do do that too. Wow, I'm so versatile and worth the investment! <laughs> and did I spy one sticker missing? Yeah, she picked that one when she laid down some brown spider eggs in the toilet, though likely just by sheer dumb luck as it's never happened again since. I am so proud of her and my immensely marketable image. Well, after seeing you get turned into incentives for my toddler to take a dump on command, that marketability certainly changes my impression of you. Uh, maybe a GoFundMe page would be less humiliating. She only knows you through pooping. Wait till she finds out about your TV shows and comics and movies. Uh, Spidey may be strapped for cash, but he's also proud to be your pot of gold at the end of your rainbow toilet journey. Now go drop a greasy, steamy stinker for your pal Spider-Man. Well, not exactly right now. Just do it on the potty seat so your dad doesn't have to keep cleaning it off of you. Bomb. What? You don't think this will work? So we technically already reviewed this in our massive licensed game episode, but considering we also reviewed 49 other games in it, and everything basically got two sentences and a number, it made sense to give this game the time of day in a full review. It was also requested. Yeah, and it got requested. But I hope this helps point out just how absolutely pointless and stupid review numbers are. If the numbers actually held any real meaning, then this review video would be technically redundant. We gave it a 10 and a 9 respectively. The spoilers! Come on, it's dumb enough that we intentionally review games with two scores just to muddy the waters. If anything, we do it just to make fun of the review scoring process in general. So anyway, a near perfect score for Marvel Spider-Man must be pretty darn good. Yeah, now prepare for me to complain for most of this video and still justify a 9. You played Spider-Man on the GameCube, right? The Sam Raimi movie tie-in video game based on the comics? Yeah, this series has always been a little disjointed. Keep in mind this all culminates in potty training stickers. Anyway, the game stood out for its web-slinging segments, where you'd get free reign to swing around New York, even though your webs would just shoot straight up into the sky instead of actually going from building to building. Not like the Marvel Spider-Man 2018 game, which we are actually reviewing, which fixed that for the most part. But most importantly, it's a blast! You really feel like you're actually swinging through Manhattan a hundred miles an hour between buildings and chasing down cars and helicopters helicopters are just taking the long way to your destination instead of fast traveling since the web swinging is just that much fun! Spider-Man has a good weight to him, and maybe it's the motion blur effects or the fact that the entirety of Manhattan is loaded at once that makes this feel indescribably immersive. It's also fun discovering all sorts of hidden photo op spots. Even though it adds up to basically nothing, having some reason to engage with the huge map just gives you enough of a reward as it is. And it's even just like when you land in the middle of a huge pile of civilians, they'll just cheer or ask for autographs or selfies and it means absolutely nothing, but it feels good to pretend like you're liked for a moment. That all helps a lot considering the rest of the gameplay is basically just a watered-down Batman Arkham series. Combat especially is nearly identical, isolating and picking off generic mooks one by one with upgradable gadgets and outfits from across the series. Though the game does have some actual Spider-Man villains and some incredible cinematic set pieces, 90% of your time is going to be spent fighting groups of no-name generic Walmart brand bad guys on the same rooftops and same street corners. Those unique character villains all get taken out disappointingly quickly. The Sinister Six all break out of prison at once, getting you excited for some real action, only to have them all quickly thrown right back in the slammer. But hey, those scenes are still really fun to experience, even though there's a disappointingly shallow amount of it in the game amidst the disproportionately large amount of Ubisoft-esque bland open-world video gaminess. There's also all those forced stealth segments where you gotta play as Mary Jane grinding the game's pacing to a screeching halt. Ooh, those sucked. And all the times Peter has to play that minigame from Bioshock to simulate work in a lab. Why was that even in the game? And don't forget the painfully slow walking simulator Miles Morales segments before he even gets any powers. Uh... Swinging around the city is really fun. Yeah, I got to see New York without dealing with the awful, smelly... Subway? Infestation of... Rats. Intolerable... Roaches? Humans. Well, there is an entire radio show dedicated to hating your guts. Gotta simulate the real New York somehow. And the game's totally not glitchy, except for all the times that it is. See them all? They're, uh... Falling. Let's get closer. <laughs> I'm supposed to take these guys out, but uh, we're having issues. 
He doesn't even recognize it as an enemy. What if I did this? Hey, buddy! This game looks great! So great I wish it were toned down a notch so the loading was a little better. I am not one of those parasites whining about no ray tracing on my window reflections. I didn't even play this on a PS4 Pro and I think it looked fine. People are actually complaining about the new game looking only slightly better than this one. And wow! Can you have less troubles in your life to be that petty about a fantastically realized video game? About a comic book character? Do you not realize how lucky we are that this doesn't downright suck? Just ask Square Enix how the modern Avengers are holding up lately. However, I'm just now finding out about a huge graphical overhaul for a remastered version, which probably only happened because of those hopeless out-of-touch crybabies. Almost certainly just slowed down development for the sequel, but at least it probably looks better. They completely changed Peter's face. But what? Oh my god! He actually looks like a real relatable, physically and mentally overwhelmed human being before. Now he just looks like he sings for One Direction. Uh, they're still a thing, right? No, not for like 10 years. Now who's the irrational whiner? But this is a legitimate downgrade! <laughs> Go play the GameCube game. This looks phenomenal. Shut up. The game opens with that Marvel flipbook animation thing, so you know from the get-go that, that this will probably be a plot hole-ridden, sloppily written disaster. But it's not, though! It's actually breaking a lot of those crappy movie stereotypes. Peter Parker starts the game eight years into being Spider-Man, and most of his major villains are already imprisoned, cutting right to the interesting part of his career and not dwelling on retelling his origin story for the nine trillionth time. Yeah, he's clearly reaching for things to do, considering he starts out by taking down a Daredevil villain. The actual story does a good job of portraying what makes Spider-Man stories interesting, a constant bombardment of one guy's incredibly stressful work-life balance. But its new villain is so forgettable, I don't think I could even explain a single interesting thing that this guy even did. Even while looking at his wiki, Mr. Negative's even named after his own insignificant inclusion. I think he might have inadvertently killed Miles' dad. The whatever. Well, Critical Gamer, we should have called you Mr. Negative. Cute. You do eventually get a real final boss fight with Dr. Octopus, which even the most ignorant of Spider-Man fans will see coming from the very beginning, as you spend half the game working for the guy, and all the while the game lays it on incredibly thick with its foreshadowing. It's even got one of those famous Marvel post-credit teases line up what's to come, and though it's implying the return of some more familiar characters, it's done in a unique spin that has piqued my interest. So sure, the overarching story is kinda messy with its pacing issues, but luckily it's all held together with good, fun writing fitting the characters, and the climax also feels like a strong payoff that was actually built up throughout the game. So nothing like an actual Marvel movie. Exactly! So this is in the same vein as basically all the other modern video game music soundtracks, where it's epic and grand, but completely lacking of any core melody or memorable tracks you'll want to download. Anymore, this should just be the sound design segment, considering I just want to talk about voice direction in modern games instead. Ugh. Sure, the voice acting was great. Spider-Man in particular was cast perfectly. He's probably my favorite current iteration of the Spider-Guy. Did you notice that the voice for Electro was Josh Keaton, the voice of Peter from the old spectacular Spider-Man cartoon? Oh, that means when they meet, they can totally do the thing! You mean... And that's about the extent of my Spider-Man knowledge, outside of potty training stickers. Ever wanted to take a sightseeing trip to New York City, but you're too disturbed by the fact that it's basically a human anthill on an island? Well, this game's surprisingly good for that. It also happens to have Spider-Man in it. It's ironic that Insomniac Games, the creators of the ingenious LOD system in Spyro the Dragon, would go on to make this impressive open world map of a real place utilizing the same brilliant game design techniques that immortalize their importance in the industry. Look, I don't even like Spider-Man that much, or even Marvel for that matter. I even said for over a decade that Invincible is where it's at! but I still highly recommend this game in spite of it all. If you liked Batman Arkham Asylum, you've basically already played this game, but as a Metroidvania. But the best part is swinging through the city! My mistake, you basically already played this game. I can't stress enough, these games play identically. Come on, superheroes are all about shameless rip-offs. The positive gamer in me... You know what? Screw it. Sure, I had enough fun with Marvel Spider-Man, but only by comparison to the rest of the disastrous pandemonium that is Marvel. So I'm instead giving it an 8 out of 10, because I think it had its great moments, but actually had a lot of room for improvement in hindsight. And I'm a human being, and I'm allowed to have an evolving opinion. Bite me. The critical gamer in me also thinks a change of score is in order for Marvel Spider-Man, with a 7 out of 10. 
Maybe we rated it highly by comparison to the rest of the dumpster fire of licensed games we reviewed all at once. But hey, we are an IGN, and a 7 still means it's well above average. Yes! Now we've rated this game a 10, a 9, an 8, and a 7. <laughs> what do you think? Let us know how your positive and critical sides rate Marvel's Spider-Man in the comments below. Now, if you're still under the delusion that review scores actually mean anything, and you're just playing with yourself. Sticker. Special thanks to Kara this week for nominating this episode. She did this by using the 15th anniversary event that is still going on, by the way. You can nominate your own episode and it requires no donations whatsoever. You can literally just like help out the channel and nominate an episode for free and you can do it just like Kara did and get your own episode. Just like Spider-Man. Isn't that right? Spider-Man, Spider-Man does the things that spiders can, and um, webs and, and bad guys get caught in uh, Green Invincible instead. Anyway, thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe for more. Use the links in the description to nominate your own episode, and thank you to all of our Patreon members, Aspen, uh, Arrow, Sid, Genio, Laura, and Squad Fam. Good luck on your potty training. Hoo